Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. And hello there, Stevie Mans. It's been a while. It's been it's been a while. It's been it's been a month of Sundays. And yet, here we are once more. Yes, I was going to say it's been seven hours and fifteen days. That's no. solid. I was gonna say it's been <laughs> a few weeks since you looked at me. But uh, you know, we don't need to clear the rights for all this stuff. Uh, <laughs> oops. Uh Oops. Well, listen, we're back because there's Star Trek is back. Yes. I've there's I've more. missed you. I mean, I've missed Star Trek. I have also missed you. I've also missed you. Sometimes the yeah. order has I've missed you more than I missed Star Trek. You know what? That is maybe the kindest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I miss you more than Star Trek. That should be like a Valentine's Day card. The greetings card. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> Fortunately, we're a package deal. You and I get to see each other when there is Star Trek, and also sometimes when there's not. But, yeah. you know, life is what it is. Anyway, we're back because Lower Decks is back. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very exciting, this whole new season of Lower Decks. Okay, uh, right. I've almost forgotten how to do the show. Today's uh, <laughs> star date is star date 331 <laughs> And we're talking about Lower Decks Season 3. Can you believe Season 3? Season 3? Mm-hmm. I can't believe Lower Decks is three years old. The time just flies by. It's your baby's so growing up. <laughs> right before your eyes. If you blink, you'll miss it. Uh, season 3, Episode 1, entitled Grounded. Uh, I don't know. I'm super excited. Should we uh, We got to do our preamble. Uh, uh, listen. This is a podcast. If this is the first time you're hearing our, our mm-hmm, podcast, mm-hmm, maybe mm-hmm. live, maybe you've checked out some back episodes and now you're like, hey, what's up with these two nerds? Uh, this is what we do. We talk about Star Trek every day. Uh, every day? Well, I do every I try to, to talk about Star Trek every day. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, what what else? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have a Patreon. Uh, yes, Patreon. Yes, we have a Patreon where you can join us and, and do more Trek things with us. We hang out. We have Zoom parties. We watch Star Trek together. You are able to get some behind-the-scenes access, and you can do that all for the uh, starting sum of $5 a month at patreon.com forward slash phasers. Join us there. Yes, and if you do that, you can see me very slowly dancing whenever Stevie talks about Patreon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what else? Uh, that's it, man. Oh, I added into my notes that we're supposed to say that our episodes come out on YouTube. And I wrote, yes. brackets, need Earl. <laughs> <laughs> you can find our YouTube uh, somewhere. I think probably just go to our website and then there's there's a clicky button thing. So setphasers.com and then you can find all of the things. All you got to do is find the clicky button thing. Yeah. That's, 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 clicky that's, button that's, that's thing. Great thing. Clicky button thing. Uh, well, without further ado, shall we? <laughs> run it down. It's time to run it down. Can you run it? We sure can Mm -hmm. run it down for you. Okay, basically, the quick backstory is that at the end of last season, there was a whole thing with the Packleds and their planet, their main city was blown up. And we, I think we knew that it was some, some sort of conspiracy to do a thing, but basically the end of last season was captain freeman being arrested hauled off by uh, uh starfleet officers for the the crime of having uh sabotaged and blown up pack led planet and so we begin this season with the whole team is grounded they're grounded on earth and captain freeman is on trial mm-hmm. for blowing up uh pack led planets well, pack led planet pack led tongue twisters have begun uh yes big strong city and uh 
we get an FNN news update from Sylvia Rand, and it's all about uh, that. And also that, hey, there's an inc- incandescent verugament swarm, but who cares? Mm-hmm. I assume it stands for Federation News Network. That was my assumption. Cool. I... <laughs> that was it. That was all I wanted to add there. <laughs> and and it was well added. Uh, and all Mariner's Mariner's super upset and is throwing potted plants at all the screens in her father's house. Her father is Admiral Freeman, and he's like, "You gotta trust in Starfleet. They're gonna exonerate your mother." But Mariner just doesn't believe it. She thinks they want someone to take the fall for this, and that it's gonna be her mom. Uh, also, they get word from a friend of their father's, Admiral Les Buenamigo, <laughs> who is uh, tells them that the judge assigned this myth. Bin Tong, who's apparently a conservative planets rights activist who obviously cares more about planets, I guess, than people. Is that the subtext there? <laughs> and therefore is more likely to uh, to convict uh, Captain Freeman than to uh, acquit her. And uh, so Mariner storms out and starts breaking things. And uh, that's basically the, the beginning of the episode. And so the, the what happens next? We're at Boimler's family estate. Uh, mm. their vineyards and there's a beautiful shot very Picard-esque of him you know with his wine hat on I don't know what you call hats I don't know yeah the big sun hats. hat thing he's got a big old sun hat Picard and wears and his brother wore and yeah he's looking at grapes and he's stretching oh, in the sunlight of a beautiful dusty field and we find out that uh, they actually make raisins there they they grow grapes they pluck them and then they let them sit out in the sun and wither into raisins and that's what they make on their estate and uh oh yeah boimler's being hit on by there's i guess this estate is full of super super hot (laughs) women dressed up like super hot women in the 90s not like super hot women in the uh, (laughs) 20 24th century but uh, they're all hitting on him and he is completely oblivious to all of their overtures uh, and uh, Mariner shows up and she's like, we got to go save my mother. And he's like, great, I want to get out of here. And he said, and she's worried that there's no way to exonerate her. But he's like, hey, actually, I keep he does a repeat of every captain's log every day in his own voice on his pad, which is by his quarters on the ship. So they just need to get to the Cerritos, which they know is in dry dock, but they don't know where. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it only has a small team of engineers on it. And when they say, oh, engineers, perhaps Rutherford knows where. So they go to find Rutherford. And this is where we meet Rutherford and Tendi at Cisco's Creole Kitchen in New Orleans. A little DS9 reference there. See how I made reference French a la New Orleans. Uh, and they're like <laughs> enjoying their time on Earth. They're considering going to see a London Kings game, which... Uh, I think it's a baseball team, and they're maybe going to go to Historic Bozeman, uh, which is like the Chekhov's gun of this episode. Because as soon as they mentioned Historic Bozeman, I was like, we got to go mm-hmm. to Historic Bozeman. Uh, but then they're, uh, they see an update on how the trial is going, and the opening statements are happening, and apparently it looks like it's going poorly for Captain Freeman. And Mariner enters, and she's like, we need your help to save my mom. And they're like, great, we're down. Uh, and and Tandy's like, you could just tell the court about Boimler's logs. And Mariner's like, no, they want a California class captain to take the fall. So they all get up and uh, uh, they know how to get to the Cerritos. Like Rutherford knows where it is, but apparently you can only get there via a special encrypted transporter being guarded by one of Starfleet's oldest and most tenacious g- g- guards. And uh, they go there and they run in. They're going to knock him out and then use the special transporter to get straight to the Cerritos to find the patent. And then, anyway, they get in there and they find out that the only guard is an old guy named Carlton Dennis. Just a sweet old man with a cane. And he's so, oh, hey, guys. And he offers them a tour. And they say, oh, great. And then they're all trying to knock him out, but they can't do it because he's such a sweet old man who's like, you want tea or coffee or something? Uh, and then and a he's butterscotch. like, you know, people, can I get you kids a butterscotch? A butterscotch. I think he literally offers a butter. Yes. Mm, he does. Uh, which Mariner takes. And then he's like, oh, you know, it's so nice to have visitors because people normally come in here just to knock me out and use the encrypted transporter. You wouldn't be doing that. Would you? And he pulls out a phaser. And they're like, no, we're so sorry. And he says, oh, don't cry. I'll make you some soup. Uh, so he makes soup. He doesn't believe in the charges. He And he, in fact, would even aid them in their desperate mission to, to clear Captain Freeman's name, but because of the aforementioned Verugament 
swarm, the the transporter won't work. And so uh, he's like, I can't send you up in the transporter. Uh, you'd have to, the only way to get to that dry dock would be by a ship. And they're like, oh, well, there goes our plan. And the end of the episode. No, I'm lying. Because then they mention go, Bozeman, Montana. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, they got a, a replica of the Phoenix. Only goes warp one, but you can ride it. It's super fun. And that gives Mariner an idea. And she's like, you can't beam us to the dry dock. Beam us to Bozeman. We're in unless they do a crazy plan. They steal the ship. Uh, oh, there's a weirdo who gets on who's like a scared of flying, I guess. Scared of warp. <laughs> uh, named Gavin. God, I wrote it down. Gavin, yes. Gavin gets on with them. Uh, yeah, goes up. He's screaming. Uh, but uh, Zephram Cochran shows up. This is a great throwback to First Contact, I thought. that. Uh, oh, yeah. He says, oh, I almost forgot. And takes out that weird disc that we thought when First Contact came out would be the future of how people stored music. A little <laughs> mini disc. And puts on some rock and roll. Uh, anyway, Rutherford hacks him. They... Uh, warp to the dry dock, which is the naked Cerritos. No, no hull plating. And uh, they get off there to do what they're going to do. Gavin is like, who apparently, having gone through that, decides he's going to be a solo explorer. He's Captain Gavin, and he takes the Phoenix and he flies off very ungainly into the stars. They get there, they find Bormer's logs. As we can imagine, they are terribly embarrassing. He has repeated everything the captain says, but he's also talked about having uh, gas and his purple hair dye. Yeah, he wants desperately just to fart. Uh, yeah, no one knows what his true hair color is. Uh, I thought that was very funny because his hair is purple and there's no explanation for it other than raisins. Anyway, uh, it doesn't seem like that's going to work. Mariner's like, fine, I guess I won't work. They're like, okay, great, we'll go back. They get on a shuttle, uh, the Joshua Tree, and uh, then Mariner's like, oh, I just got to check on something, but she's hacked the shuttle and sent them back to Earth, and she's taking over the Cerritos because she's going to go. There was like a Klingon person who apparently is the arms dealer that met, that Captain Freeman was involved with, and she's going to go find out who that Klingon is. Uh, and uh, she does that. Uh, but then the, crew, the, the, the other lower deckers. I've had so much trouble figuring out a word for the foursome. The lower deckers? Does that work? I think so. Yeah. Great. The other lower deckers uh, trick the shuttle into going back on the ship, and there's a fight on the bridge with Mariner, and she's beating the crap out of all of them. <laughs> Boiler, in fact, exclaims, why are you so good at fighting? Uh, but Rutherford manages to lock her out of the navigation so that she can't steal the ship, so that she can't ruin her Starfleet career. But then they're hailed by Starfleet security, and they're in the Verugament field, and the Verugament are flying onto the ship, and, it, uh, you know, they're they're, uh, you know, it's like a swarm that's going to do it. They're doing it on the ship. They're all getting together and doing it. Mm -hmm. A mass orgy? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, it's so many words. There's a big uh, glowing electrical rugament, uh slimy uh, space uh, squid toad uh, slug orgy. And uh, Tendi has a great idea to tell them uh, the security that, hey, this is an experiment that we were supposed to do. Security comes on board and they've collected some verugament and they're being shocked and they're like moving eggs out, in and out of ovipositors and getting shocked. And security's like, great, I'm so glad you guys took uh, such initiative. So who's the senior officer who uh, said you could do this mission? And just as it seems like everything is going to fall apart. That's when Captain Freeman and her her bridge crew come on deck and say, I did. And apparently, yeah, uh, Mariner only needed to trust in Starfleet to get to the bottom of it. Apparently, a desperate mission was launched to while, while Freeman was in court to figure out uh, what had happened. They found some uh, connection between the Paclids and like a data person, data miner. I forget what it's called. Uh, anyway, they... They found this person, an elite mission went there, a data fabricator, and helped set up the Paclet conspiracy. And they found out the Paclets blew up their own planet in order to force the uh, Federation to help them relocate to a planet with more raw materials. And so Mariner, uh, sorry, Captain Freeman is cleared of all charges, is back on deck. Everything is well. The securities leave. Mar uh, Mariner's like, I'm so glad you're alive. And Freeman's like, in fact... You're actually all in trouble for doing terrible, terrible things. I've only been out an hour and you've stolen the stupid ship, you idiots. So she has the lower deckers clean up the thing, uh, the, which is full of slime, eggs and stuff uh, from the orgy. And uh, uh, she and 
uh, Admiral Freeman, I forget his first name, uh, go and chew out Mariner, who still seems just completely, you know, is, is Mariner about it. And so Captain Freeman realizes maybe they have been enabling Mariner. And since they don't have the heart to kick her out of Starfleet, they'll put someone else in total charge of Mariner's career. None other than Jack Ransom. <laughs> <laughs> Is that worthy of a done and done or not? I don't know. I mean, there's, you know, the big, there's no real, yeah. uh, we'll get to that. Anyway, yeah. So uh, Ransom's in charge of her now, and that's uh, how that goes. And the end of the episode is the Lower Deckers cleaning the band, being like, it's good to be back, even though we're getting shocked and it's nasty. And they do check out uh, Federation News Network to see that Captain, quote, Captain Gavin, uh, crashed and has been saved and is being uh, dragged away by Starfleet security. And he screams into the camera, you haven't seen the last of me. And that's the end of episode one of season three of Star Trek Lower Decks, entitled Grounded. Mm -hmm. You want to chat about that? Yes, let's do. I say, darling, let's do a quick chat about that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. please, yeah. Yeah. let's do. What did you think? I loved the episode, but I felt that... I just thought that um, Freeman's exoneration thing was going to go on as part of a season arc. So I was a little disappointed that it was just so, it was resolved so quickly. It's a very Mike Mann, McMahon. Mike Mike McMahon. Uh, Mike Mm -hmm. McMahon uh, style joke is that like the the big setup. I also, we, all the previews made me think they're doing all this to clear Captain Freeman's name. And of course, no. Yeah, Starfleet's like, no. That's the kind of thing you would solve in an episode of, of Star Trek. It would be True. like, you're on trial, and then someone would give a great speech, and some evidence would be found by some other person. So I thought that was cool, but I agree. I was like, wow, this is... I thought we were going to end on it to be continued or something. Uh, but we have, like, a different plot hook here, and it's more about... Which is kind of interesting. It's more about Mariner and her impulsiveness, mm-hmm. her uh, her obvious like she would be great in command if she gave a damn about being in command because i do wonder we, you know this is now season three we've established who the characters are we're mm. now developing them right yeah. so it's whether they as cartoon characters can be developed or if we're just still you know everyone's gonna be the same character and it will work forever and ever like the simpsons or right. whether we'll do something else yeah, I do feel like they're... I, <clears throat> oh, boy. Did yeah. I just go through puberty? <clears throat> yeah, I do feel like uh, we're going to see some development. In the, that's my normal voice. Uh, this is how I normally talk. Uh, I do feel like we're going to see some character development from from uh, these characters. I think that's kind of the, the move here. It seems like they're really pushing... Do you feel like... Okay, obviously, tinfoil time for mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As usual, I have an absurd theory. By season four, Captain Mariner. I, don't, I was going to say, do we hear wedding bells? But like, you know, I don't know. The woo of a captain on deck, whatever. I feel like, do you, I think it would, would be more likely by season four to see her as first officer. Right. Like Ransom, get Ransom out of there. Mariner's first officer on the ship. Yeah, I don't know if she'd be, well, certainly not on the Cerritos. Right. But there's got to be some like, all the senior staff are gone and Mariner has to sit in the chair mm-hmm. which I guess has sort of happened already in different instances anyway I like this progression I do feel like Mariner is slowly as an anti-hero becoming better but I want the whole thing with Ransom and her is I think it's going to be very interesting sexual tension sexual tension and also a uh, profound weird dislike of each other but also like of each other it's a love story a love story. My love is like a storybook story. I, I thought I really thought you were going to go with Taylor Swift there. You know, I'm a capricious person. I contain multitudes. Do you have your piano there? Go on. I would love to hear you do Taylor Swift. It's no, it's behind me. I, it's not set up. I just got home yesterday. You want me to launch to a Taylor Swift song? Yes. Just turn sideways and start. Just do acapella. I just want to hear it. No. <laughs> no. I know this is a trap. <laughs> no. It's a trap. It's not I know a trap. a trap when I hear one. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Just sing some. Uh, I'm not recording or anything. Just go ahead and sing no. some Taylor Swift. I would <laughs> never. Sing right into your microphone. Sing right into the microphone. I would never remix anything without your permission. Look directly to the camera and sing Taylor Swift like you mean it. Uh, 
the other thing I thought was because I do know that we're going to Deep Space Nine this season. That was a big reveal. Yes, 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 yes. There are three Deep Space Nine. I don't know if you have Easter eggs or anything like I that. I do have some, yes. All right, so maybe let's go to Easter eggs and I'll mention my super nerdy Deep Space Nine stuff. Sounds good. You know, do you remember how Easter eggs works? Okay. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me just stretch. <laughs> <laughs> You just, you just uh, took a pause there, and I was like, I'm waiting. Yeah, no, I stepped back, and I was like, is there... Oh, no, this is me. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome to Set Phasers, SPNN, the Set Phasers <laughs> News Network. I'm Aki Burbees, and we go directly now to Stevie Mads at the Easter Egg Deck. Stevie, how are you? Well, hi there, Aki. How you doing? Happy to be here, as always. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, so, we're, we are here on the set of Lower Decks, as we usually are. We've got this behind-the-scenes access. And I have so much to tell... Why have I gone American? I have so much to tell you about... Uh, Your American accent's really good. Thank you so much. Um... <laughs> I should really do. I would love to do to be that person that, that does the you know the travel stuff like you know in the oh, chopper. Yeah. Cho- I, can I be Chopper Dave? I'd love to be Chopper yeah. Dave. Um, <laughs> Hi there, this is Chopper Dave uh, coming to you, <laughs> coming to you live from uh, just the middle of the, the sky here in Manhattan. It's it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. We got some traffic here on the uh, the A nine. The A nine is quite busy. If you were taking the A nine into work, you do not want to be here. Holy moly! <laughs> Very good. I'm very impressed. Holy <laughs> shit. Your chopper Dave is pretty on point. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. You definitely did uh, uh, <laughs> British roads, but I liked it. <laughs> I, I was like, this chopper know. Dave taking the A9. <laughs> I should have gone I 95. I 95. Um, no, I like Chopper Dave is working in England. <laughs> uh, uh, well, this is a complete aside, but um, you know, sometimes we live in this little rural place in uh, Hudson Valley, and someone had written has written this beautiful Facebook post, and it's really funny about the Cornwall Garden Community Centre, mm. and it is hilarious. And I read it in character to my wife yesterday, and uh, yeah, it was just too funny. Anyway, I, if as a bonus, bonus content, people, I'll I'll read you I'll read you the post. Well, that's, the, that's the content we've been looking for. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Who doesn't want that, right? Anyway, I do. Um, oh, on, back to you, Stevie. Yeah. Back to you in the studio. Uh, we haven't gone there yet. So, of course, our our Easter eggs. We have Boimler's Vineyard, a nice callback to Picard and his vineyard. Where's in somewhere in France, Chateau Picard. Um, mm-hmm. But of course, they they make grapes, not wine. Rutherford sweater. I thought you would love that. I bet, in fact, Ugh. you want to buy this, don't you? Yeah, you, you would know want I to. Do. I know you do. Ugh. However, oh, fun fact, and this is sort of part. I, no, I'll tell you in, in news. There is there is some new merchandise if you want to buy some what? merchandise. But it's not it's not sort of uniformy. Um, Cisco's Creole Kitchen, delightful. Uh, did you know? I'm sure you did. That Cisco's father, Joseph, remained on Earth to run his very own restaurant. Um, mm-hmm. And I believe it was mentioned in the episode Homefront, a two-part episode yep. wherein Captain Sisko returned to Earth to consult with Starfleet about a dastardly scheme to militarize the organization. Dastardly. Dastardly. <clears throat> um, Ketracel white hot sauce. I'm mm-hmm. sure you noticed that. Of the condiments on the kitchen, the white hot sauce uh, would stand out. And Deep Space Nine fans will recognize the name. As the drug, and see, I did, I did not know what this is about because I'm not a huge yeah. DS9 fan, but it was the drug that the Dominion, the central antagonist of the show, manufactured for their ultra violent soldiers, the Gem Hadar. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, Gem Hadar soldiers were manufactured in labs for several years, eventually reaching the point where their systems would be unable to survive without the infusion of the meta. meta the ben- the yeah. narcotic. Bitty, I can't bitty, say that word. Nar- that methamphetamine. Like. Metamphetamine. Is that right? Yeah, we just this say methamphetamine. This is clearly, clearly someone who doesn't, Dave voice. doesn't take drugs. Um, anyway, so that was a bit fun. Moving on. Obviously, Bozeman, Montana. Now, how fun was that? Mm-hmm. Who so recognized, fun. I'm sure you did, that James Cromwell, who played Zeph and Cochran from First Contact, uh, voiced his, his character? How yeah, fun. of course. How fun was, so was that? I love that. Um, well, anyway, I'll come on to that. And uh, do, 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 do. Um, there were some weird engineering tools. Did you see that when they go into the um, the off grid transporter? And I think that was a bit of a reference. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. To, All the, the yeah. weird stuff that the that uh, Dennis was 
had repaired. Yes. Or, yeah. It was a deep cut because I think those tools might be recognized by the Deep Space Nine fans from the episode Hard Time. Did you notice that? You big nerd. Um, it's no the episode idea. in which I'm dancing. That's how much I love. Chief it. O'Brien yeah. is arrested and forced to virtually live out a lifelong prison sentence in his mind over the course of only a few minutes. Which reminds me of when Picard got trapped in yes. that weird thingy Bob Mitz it's thing. The same app, except that O'Brien doesn't get a wonderful life. He gets a terrible, terrible life. Yeah, because um, he's O'Brien. One of my fun things. So at the beginning, when there's uh, you see the new like FNN and the news of Captain Freeman across the screen, we had a banner yes. that I had knew some you were fun nail this. things. Okay, there were some great. fun things. There was a six-year-old Zach, Zach Dorn child who became the Stratagema Grandmaster, and fun. Mm-hmm. And this this was probably my most fun. I think there was a there was a news piece about Captain Jellico and the Zebulon sisters. They were banned, mm-hmm. and of course we remember Captain Jellico. Um, but one of the one I really enjoyed was Sonny Clemens, um, who you may remember from. I think it was, oh, maybe it was season one or season two of Star Trek Next Generation. Um, Sonny Clemens was the country star who was cryogenically frozen. <laughs> they bring right. him back to life and he's, you know, like, where is he? So obviously he's lived out his days um, <laughs> back on Earth and has caused a riot at one of his concerts, what? which I thought was rather funny. That's um, amazing. I did not catch that one. And I... You know, I went back and looked at it and was like, Stevie's going to get this. Oh, but yeah, I yeah, did yeah. not know the Sonny Clemens didn't register. But now I remember that episode. Yep. That was that was probably one of my favorites. Um, He inspired a riot, which is quite funny. Yeah, sorry. It was the, the new- actor that has the weird tooth, right? Yes. The guy who plays that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the Neutral yeah. Zone episode in 1988, mm-hmm. which must have been the first season. So there you go. Definitely. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I thought was quite funny was Gavin. I have a feeling Gavin is going to go on to be some sort of like mud character. Why would they yes. why would they have him in there? There was no point to him him being there other than just a little amusement, but I don't think Mike mm-hmm. Mike Bigman's a bit cleverer than that. So I think he will come back to be some sort of evil evil person at some point and this will be, you know, something the lower deckers fucked up earlier. Yes, <laughs> they yeah. have to fix. Another thing that comes to bite them in the ass. Uh well, because yes, you know, that's part of their definitely Mike McMahon is setting something up there, I think. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. For sure. I'm curious. Captain yeah. Gavin. Pirate Gavin. Pirate Gavin. Well, that's all that I have here from the uh, the set of the Lower Deckers uh, here. And, 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 and up here in, in the sky, this is Chopper Dave, and we're sounding back to you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you, Chopper Dave, TV bads. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not in the chopper, so we could, can we get that turned off? Thank Sorry. You. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, very good. I just would mention that uh, part of the I can't do that in this voice uh, that I thought those those Deep Space Nine references are indicative of Mike McMahon's cleverness that those are being woven in for what I don't know why we go to Deep Space Nine but there's all these references to DS Nine including <coughs> might I add a reference to the London Kings which uh, I haven't done the research but I'm pretty sure is uh, first created a, a, a twenty. 20- third 24th century baseball team uh of which uh, uh, uh cisco uh, may mention because he's a big baseball fan in these space nine so i just thought that was cool the catch yourself white the those weird things that uh, miles had to make uh and uh and going obviously going to cisco's gumbo kitchen all mm-hmm. that stuff is like hmm he's this is like yeah they're threatened it's really making my tinfoil go crazy okay uh <laughs> That's all for now. Let's go to the news. Ooh, I love a bit of news. News around the galaxy. Don't we love some news? Well, Star Trek fans fear not. Star Trek Day is coming on September 8th. Uh, and if you are in some cities, and I will give you um, a link in the show notes, there are Delta AR portals, right? What? Which will be available to fans, and you will be able to unlock a variety of uh, exciting 3D content. So um, I will put a link to that in the show notes, but that's very exciting and how fun. If you are in New York, it will be um, around Hudson Yards. So uh, mm-hmm. if if you're free... On September, I think it's possibly the 7th, so it might be before Star Trek Day. Um, or on Star Trek Day. I forget. I right. apologize. But yes, yeah, so it's, it's it's coming to you. Wrath of Khan. Wrath of... Are you, in fact, ooh, we could go together. 
Wait, we but I thought you were going without because it's happening while I'm on tour. Oh fuck yes, I had to go without. Yeah. Sorry, I went back to wrap of con- I was going back to the Star Trek day and the AR oh, yeah. portals. Oh yeah, Star Trek day but is my but travel. You are day. traveling, so never that's mind. That's when I. That's literally when I leave. <sighs> Oh, well, so, uh, Wrath of Khan's 40th anniversary, we've been talking about this for a long time, um, is showing in cinemas the 4th, 5th and 8th of September. I believe I'm going. I think it's also on the 7th, too. I think I'm going on the 7th. It's uh, Labor Day. Um, you can see Fathom events for more details. I will also put that link in the show notes for you because I am so good to you. Uh, and Damn good. Fun fact. So Lower Deckers, uh, if you are a fan of Lower Decks and if you are listening to this podcast, I would hope you are. Um, but yeah. Star Trek is releasing... They're doing quite a fun thing in association uh, where they are releasing a T-shirt a week um, in, in, in like a kind of companion T-shirt, if you will. So if you go to Star Trek dot com, um, you can find there is a, the Lower Decks T-shirt collective um announcement. And yeah, you go too fast. Hold on. Sorry. I'm literally going to Star Trek dot com. Uh, I just, just send you the link. Reference. I'll just send you the link. But, no, no, I'm on it. I'm on it. OK. Um, yeah, so the first one, so you can buy all of the t-shirts because they only, they're, they're dropping one a week, um, which is quite fun. And this one, the first week is, uh, it's a, a Bozeman Montana t-shirt. So it's kind of, Look you know, thing. it's, it's I'm deep sorry. cut. It's a deep cut. The second so one obviously good. will drop next week. You can buy all oh. of them for 250 and I think that expires, um, the 1st of September. Otherwise you'll just have to see if you can get your, your hands on one. Um, but yeah, so that's that's quite a bit of fun news. Anyway, that uh, Aki, uh, do you huh? do you have? A, are, are you just Sorry. having too much fun there with the t-shirts? I literally uh, was just looking for how I could pay. I was hoping to pay by the time we were need to get so the Chateau Picard hi, or, wines. That's, that's we got so much to do. I got we to, do. Wow. We have a lot of um, wow. Trek merchandise yes, to buy. So we're nerds. Anyway, <clears throat> that's all from the news. <laughs> Well, that's oh. oh, so sorry. We uh, that we should go to next time. I'm still. I I need to close this window. <laughs> next time on set phasers. That truly was news for me, and it's changed my life. Uh, uh, oh God. Okay, so next time we'll talk about episode two of season three of Star Trek Lower Decks, in which something dastardly and terrifying will happen. Oh, uh, uh, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you liked it, uh, please rate, uh, rate. So please, you know, give us a review on Apple Podcasts do, or something. Please do. I don't and, think we've had a, yes, a review yeah. for a while. We would love to hear how much you love our show. Or if you don't, then, you know, don't bother. That would be, that's fine too. Yeah. Um, um, you know, also, uh, yeah, it's all great. And, uh, yeah, uh, we have a bajillion back episodes. We've covered every new Star Trek episode by episode to date. So that's Discovery, Picard, Lower Decks, and Strange New Worlds. We have episodes for each episode of those episodes. And I say episodes starting to sound like a weird word. I'm going to stop saying episodes now. Yeah. Stevie, anything We're, to add? Uh, yeah, I can't remember. You can probably follow us somewhere. Uh, just go to setphasers.com and find where you want to follow us and, and engage. Uh, please join our Patreon. We would love to have you and join our crew. Um, we are probably due for a uh, hangout soon. So please, yes. do, please do join and become one with us. We want, we want you on our crew. We want, we want, we want you on our crew. And of course, you know, you can find us at patreon.com slash set phasers. Uh, oh, wait, that's what you just said. So you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at set phases podcast, uh, where Stevie makes memes, meme game strong. And I like them Indeed. and, uh, and uh, tr- truly do. Uh, and that's it, I guess. Yes. And uh, uh, what do I say next? I think I say something like, you know, computer and program or... Well, you I, say... Yes, uh, I'm, 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 uh, and I am Stevie Mans. And I am... And, dear listener, as far as you're concerned, I'm your mama now. <laughs> and this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical... I just realized we didn't do quotable moments, so actually that's perfect. Oh, yeah. Let, ooh, <laughs> Wait, do you... We can't go I didn't back. have any. Let's, we, we can't go back. Okay, we well, that was my back. main one. That one's great. That's and Ransom one. saying, as far as you're concerned, I'm your mama now is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Computer. End program. Mm-hmm.